So Kanika, welcome to Storytellers. Thank you. It's a pleasure. What does a, being a storyteller mean to you? Storyteller, being a storyteller means everything to me actually. You know, I think um, it's something that uh, defines me as an individual and um, you know, the most important and beautiful moments uh, that I feel that I've, I've lived or felt intensely in my life are the ones that I kind of feel through my characters. So for me, it's a very, uh, it's not just a profession. It's not just uh, something that I do for a living. Mm -hmm. It's uh, something that kind of defines me and lets me be and keeps me going. Mm -hmm. You know, you have written some very successful films. The most recent ones, of course, being Kedarnath and Man Marzia. What is the onus on a storyteller today in India? What is the responsibility you feel towards society? Or are we all here to entertain? Oh, no, absolutely not. Entertainment alone is definitely not something that uh, I think uh, we should be looking at. And I think lately uh, most of the writers and storytellers are not going down, down that path. Uh, the whole purpose of storytelling, I feel, is to entertain plus to give something for us to think about. This, uh, the, you know how storytelling started when we used to sit around bonfires together. It was a very community kind of an experience. Mm -hmm. And we would tell tales to each other older generation would tell tales of morality. So from the, the entire inception of storytelling is based on the idea of passing on a knowledge, passing on an idea, passing on a thought, passing on a perspective, some morality. So, so that is always ingrained in the, the whole uh, uh, the beginning of storytelling, the whole ideation of storytelling, the whole purpose of storytelling. So that can never be taken away. For me, I will I can talk about me personally. Uh, it's a very important decision as to why will I invest one year of my life or more two years of my life into this particular story, into these particular characters. What do I have to say, and why is it important? Mm -hmm. If those questions are not answered in a in a manner which you know is fulfilling or is satisfactory, I would not want to tell a story. Mm -hmm. For example, in Manmarzia, I felt why do I want to tell the story? I wanted to tell the story to kind of capture the way um, you know we we define love or we uh, like redefine love mm -hmm. or we experience love you know there's, there's always been a definition and there's always been a uh, a wave that we've looked at love and romance in bollywood yeah. for example yeah. especially in bollywood yeah. and we as indians and we as uh, uh, you know we depend heavily on bollywood for mm -hmm. defining so many things for us sure, be it romance sure. be it uh, be it weddings, be it uh, celebrations, mm -hmm. be it uh, emotions. You know, we engage emotionally with with the films and mm -hmm. with our characters. And the way romance has been depicted in Bollywood was very unsatisfactory for me. And then again, Kedarnath, uh, the reason why I wanted to tell Kedarnath, you know how we have such a deep-rooted this identity with be, uh, that we have this caste related identities, mm -hmm. we have religion related identities, unfortunately, which we have not been able to share. Mm. You know, um, who you are is unfortunately defined by what religion you come from. Mm -hmm. Being a Hindu or a Muslim changes perspectives, changes lives, changes attitudes in certain places. Right. Sometimes your life depends on it. So, um, you know, we have different kinds of Indias that we're living in where uh, depending on which area and which uh, socio-economic, um, you know, space you're in, mm -hmm. um, these identities will matter less or more. And the most important thing was that, you know, ultimately when you face a natural calamity or when you face death, you know, these religious identities, being a Hindu or a Muslim, being a upper caste or lower caste, you know, nothing is nothing really matters no. you know ultimately we're all going to die the mm. same way and we're all going to go to the same place mm. and i would really applaud uh, my producers my director abhishek kapoor the actors you know to come out in this kind of an environment mm -hmm. the kind of environment we have in the country today where yeah. if you say if uh, if you say anything um, which goes against the narrative of the majority of people you are deemed anti-national and then you are called names and you know it's so difficult to express an opinion which is perhaps different mm -hmm. from the uh, from the majority sure. but kanika you know kedarnath was about a very recent event in fact i had gone to kedarnath just one year before the floods um, and so many people that were affected by it are still alive today did you feel what was your thought process when writing it you know when people who were victimized by that tra tragedy um, you know how did you stay sensitive about their emotions and making sure that you were not 
trivializing what they went through. You know, let me let me just start from the beginning. You know, writing Kedarnath was such an overwhelming process because when I started researching about mm. that incident and event, you know, of course, all of us had heard about it and, uh, and seen it on our television sets, the kind of destruction and the kind mm. of despair. Mm. But when I dug deeper into the, the actual happenings and what really happened, you know, I was so overwhelmed because this level of destruction and, you know, uh, why it happened, the way people were affected, and the whole miracle of it all, you know, that the, how the temple was standing, you know, there were so many, I was just, uh, I just couldn't fathom that, you know, how these, th these things happened the way they did, the way, you know, uh, our military kind of went in to sure. help people, you know, there's so much, um, the, the examples of bravery, selflessness, miracle, faith, you know, how that entire Hanuman Katila came and stood, and these are mm. facts, you know, that one is like researching, and my, my rational brain is kind of wondering how is this even possible that, you know, at that particular time this this uh, this entire piece of stone has come, this boulder has come and, you know, it's right blocked the entire flow of water and, you know, it's protecting the temple and the temple is the only thing that's standing. Um, and of course that this is huge tragedy and people losing their loved ones. So there were so many conflicting emotions that one had to kind of, you know, um, you know, see and deal with and all that. So it was very overwhelming. The research of it was really, really overwhelming. And then when I kind of, uh, you know, took in everything and, you know, uh, my process of research and taking in all the information, everything was over. Then I asked myself that, you know, what would I want to focus on? Mm. You know, you know, the loss and the... Mm the pain of it but then I consciously thought that you know do I want to um, revisit that would I want to uh, you know invite all these people to come and watch this story mm. uh, would should it be about fate or should it be mm. about pain mm. should it be about death and destruction or should it mm. be about all of us coming together and I mm. chose to you know go the other way because uh, you know I know there was loss and there was uh, devastation, but there was also, you know, a lot of selflessness. Kanika, what does feminism mean to you? <laughs> feminism, I feel, is one of the most misused terms in recent times because, um, you know, unfortunately, I think we are trying to uh, have very, a very narrow definition of what feminism is. Mm. So at the outset, I would want to say that, you know, an independent woman who's making a career is mm. not the only definition of feminism. Mm. You know, I've been accused by certain sections of, um, you know, journalists and media saying that, you know, why is it that the women that you portray, uh, why is uh, feminism for you limited to, you know, drinking and mm. uh, making these, you know, choices, bold mm. choices? Why are your characters not working? Mm. Say, don't, why don't they have a career? Sure. So uh, my answer to them is that you know, when I when I place my character in a city like Amritsar, mm. I cannot just because I need to fulfill your need and your definition of a career woman, I can't create an MNC there and get her a job. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. feminism will be defined in different socio-economic spaces differently, yeah. Yeah. especially in the kind of society that we live in. We have urban. Uh, cities and then we have B tier towns and then we have villages and you know this uh, ability to make choices and uh, you know this will change now to me like a woman in a village if she has the ability to exercise her choice that today I would not like to go and fetch water hmm. today I'd like to you know do something else and somebody else can go and you know fetch water hmm. I think that's if she has the freedom to do that or if she says that you know today I'd rather take a day off mm -hmm. and spend it on myself mm -hmm. and not be you know doing all the house chores mm -hmm. all by myself for me the ability to exercise choice mm -hmm. is the most important facet of feminism today mm -hmm. now a, a, a girl running her family business in a, a town like Amritsar I think it's pretty uh, you know empowering mm -hmm. I mean she's not sitting at home mm -hmm. And uh, so what, she's now going to an office because, you know, firstly, what office should she go to? What should I create? Right. Why should I falsely create this whole thing of an empowered woman by mm -hmm. creating another kind of a, a, a work environment which doesn't exist in that city? Now coming to uh, Mukku from Kedarnath. Now she lives in a, a, a temple town. Mm -hmm. What, in what 
possible way can I give her this whole uh, thought of exercising her choice? Mm. In what possible way all these girls who are watching this film, who are living in these small towns, in what possible way can we manifest that you know, use your brains, mm. use, uh, follow your heart, do not be dictated to, you do not need to be subservient to a patriarchal system. Now, those are the very relevant questions to those girls and women who are watching this. Mm. And Mukku comes from that society and, and what does Mukku do? Father says that you know, you are supposed to get married to this guy. She feels that you know, uh, in Kedarna, she feels mm. that but he is my sister's uh, uh, ex fiance, right? and she says, I will not take it lying down. Mm. She says, Why should I accept everything that you're putting mm. on me just because you're my father? Kanika, who were your inspirations growing up um, in Bollywood, whether it's films or writers? Because you know, it's interesting, the, the kind of films that you and I grew up on are very different than the kind of films that you're writing today. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that. So, you know, I, I, grew, I grew up in, a, in Amritsar. Mm. Uh, you know, we started going to the theatres, I think post-95, we had that militancy phase and you know, mm. we were not going out to the theatres and I still remember, you know, Hum Aapke Hai Kaun, mm. I have watched it like, like 10 times in the theatre and you know, I'll tell you, being able to, I still remember that elation of watching Hum Aapke Hai Kaun in theatres in Punjab, in Amritsar, in 95, I think 95 it came uh, out, right? Uh, 94. 94. It was such a big deal, you know, because it was just not about watching a movie, it was about the sense of freedom that, you know, there's no curfew. Uh, you know, the, 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 that whole fear, psychosis that sure, was there. Sure. You know, Hum Aap Kaun became uh, a milestone of a uh, changing time. Mm. You know, so it was such an emotional, uh, gleeful experience for me. Of course, Hum Aap Kaun, like, you know, it caught the imagination of the entire country for various reasons, but it was so special to me. Yeah. Because our entire family had gone out and watched it in the theatre and it was, it was like, you know, we're going to the movies. It was such a novel experience because mm. before that there was so much of unrest and, you know, we ten, uh, almost 10 years of, you know, uh, like Punjab had gone through so much sure. trouble. And so, Kanika, you know, you've written books. Uh, you've obviously written the two films we talked about. You wrote Rawan. You have some films coming up. What is your writing process like? You know, it differs with every story. Mm. It's chaotic if you to ask me okay. and um, and if any budding writers are watching this for their health and safety yeah. I would not want to elaborate more on it but my writing process is instinctive and chaotic uh, I think the most time that I spend on is finding myself to commit to a story mm. and why do I want to tell the story mm. and I feel that you know that's the most important question mm. so mm. that for me is one of the most important uh, tent poles mm. or one of the most important things I need to kind of define and cross mm. and once I've committed that okay this is the story that mm. I need to tell then I start kind of figuring out the world mm. which world they're in and all that and once it all comes together and then the characters and what are they saying and why are they saying so it kind of builds in my head first before it goes down on paper mm. so getting it on paper is actually the last thing mm. Got it. so it's a lot of just uh, you know a lot of um, feeling, emotion, characters. I listen to a lot of music also when I'm kind of ideating on a story to kind of find some kind of a voice, some kind of a, a melody. Mm. So mm. there are various things that one needs to do to kind of get into a, a zone. So it's important to kind of get into a particular frame of mind to be mm. able to write a particular story. You know, you talked about picking up a pen to write. Do you actually pick up a pen or do you type? What is your process? No, uh, you know, I, I love writing with a pen mm. somehow. I, I, think, I think it's so exotic, it's so mm. fascinating. I think mm. I, I love it. Because I don't do it so often, mm -hmm. I think that's why I kind of mm -hmm. given a chance, I would want to write. But then uh, because I'm forgetful mm -hmm. uh, and I know if I write it and I will not find this paper ever, mm -hmm. so it's going to just get lost. Right. So the rational part of my brain tells me to not be adventurous yeah. and to go back to that laptop and it will remain there, I can find yeah. that folder. Yeah. How long does it take you to write an average screenplay? I know it depends on the film. Yeah, it depends, but uh, average I'd say a year. A year. That's how long it took you for Kedarnath and Manmar Singh, yeah. roughly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, great. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your upcoming film, uh, Mental Hekya. I read somewhere that it's a black comedy. Yeah, it's a, it's a quirky thriller. What does that mean? It means it's a quirky thriller. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> see, that, uh, see the, again, Mental Hekya, like I would, uh, it's interesting that, you know, uh, we are trying to define it. Like you're trying mm. to understand what is a quirky thriller. I'm trying to tell you that, you know, hmm, how should I slot it? 
Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I think I think that's a good thing because um does it have that intrigue this this the story it has that thriller element intrigue where you're kind of wanting to understand what is really happening, what really happened, what are the characters, what is going to happen next. So, those formats of a thriller are there. But uh the way the world unfolds and the way the characters mm. are, mm. they're quirky. I really hope that, you know, our entire team mm. can bring a, a entertaining and a fun movie mm. and also something to think about because mental health care does, uh, you know, talk about um, people who do have certain mental mm. health issues and how they are viewed upon and how they have a perspective which mm. should be celebrated. You know, you are one of those few writers who's had a very collaborative journey with their directors. You've been very involved with the filming as well of, of the movies that you've been a part of. Would you be open to doing a film where you just wrote the script, handed it and never got to look at it again or what, what would no, that see, be like I, for you? I'll tell you, I've, like I told you, storytelling, writing films, writing stories is a very personal emotional experience for me. Sure. For me, it's like just having kids. Now, um, now, will I be open to giving it away? Of course, if it is clashing with something else and if the director feels that, you know, perhaps uh, this bit let me do and, mm. you know, whatever, depending on what the situation is, of course. Mm. You know, I, I, I like to be a team player and there is, you know, uh, ultimately, once mm. it's written out, you know, the director is the captain of the ship. Mm. Mm. So, uh, whatever he's comfortable with, number one. And number two, today the trend is actually the directors are uh, not only with me with other writers as well mm. they want the writers on set because yeah. they've understood the merit of how screenplay is a very uh, organic piece of writing mm. it's not like writing a book it's not a finished piece of work mm. because you've written these scenes which are going to be interpreted by your director which then you've written these dialogues which are going to be uh, performed by actors mm -hmm. they bring their own set of experiences and emotions to it mm -hmm. uh, having said that I also feel that now times are really changing mm -hmm. and you know the way the writers were viewed earlier I think sure. I think today perhaps these these times are the best times to be a writer mm -hmm. because you know finally the whole importance and uh, of content mm -hmm. the importance of uh, uh, the contribution of mm -hmm. writers mm -hmm. you know is being um, not only applauded but you know they are being put on uh, like they like for example my producers in Manmarziya mm. both uh, Anurag and Anand sir you know they gave me the platform to come forward mm. and you know uh, you know take the credit for a lot of things mm -hmm. um, which we did as a team so it's, it's a good time to be a storyteller it's a good time to be a writer yeah. and I'm very happy to be writing in these times awesome thank you so much Kanika really thank appreciate you taking on thank you thanks thank a lot you. thank you thank